Welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a video that is probably the fifth rendition of this video. I think I've done four of these over the past year, so I've been on a consecutive streak of DIY holiday gifts. And that is because I just love creating a DIY holiday gift. Actually, a majority of my gifts that I create are DIY, and that's because a lot of my friends actually like the projects that I create, and then I tend to gift them when it comes around to getting them something for Christmas or for their birthday or anything like that. But around the holiday times especially, I feel like creating DIY gifts is like the perfect thing to do, especially if you need to make a bunch of them, if you need to do something on a budget, or or if you just want to make it a little bit more heartfelt and from you. So in today's video, I've compiled four really great DIY holiday gift ideas that we are going to be recreating, which are budget-friendly, affordable. Some of them are a little bit more time-consuming, but you can make those ones for the people that you really love, you know? Like, we have a couple different options throughout this video. I always get into an extra crafty mode around the holiday times, too. I think just with, like, decorating for Christmas and making my house really nice and cozy and just fun for the season. I do want to mention that today's video is kindly sponsored by Pexar, and I will get into that in just a bit here, but you guys, if you need a Christmas gift idea outside of a DIY, I have you covered because you're going to need this, so stay tuned. We have a lot to go through today, so why don't we just go ahead and dive on into our first project. For our first project, I have been seeing people take these ceramic platters and using a porcelain marker, which actually you can use on top of the ceramic platter and then bake it onto the surface and use it as an actual serving tray, or you can just use it on the surface and let it cure down naturally for 72 hours and use it more decoratively. So what I did was I actually purchased a platter at Home Goods. This was $14.99. I just picked one that was large that I felt like I was able to get a good amount of surface space on that I would want to gift my mom because I actually am going to be gifting her this. And I also wanted something that had a little bit of decoration on it that wasn't fully solid where I had to make everything up. So I created some dots to start with the pen and then I used a piece of tape to actually go in and write the Scots on this, which is of course our last name for our family. And I thought it was just cute to do a cursive hand lettering, which I am not great at, but I did my best. And then I went through and thickened up those lines with the marker just to the best of my abilities. The great thing about this pen is it's actually really easy to clean off. So you just get a Q-tip and just wipe it right off of the surface before it cures down. It takes like about a full 24 hours for it to start fully curing down. It's not like you can smear it at all, but it is just easy to wipe away. And I wanted to add some additional detail to this. So I added these little lines on the underside and then kind of created these pine needle motifs from each of the lines. So I just created some additional branches jutting out from our main line. And then on each of those little branches, I added tiny little pine needles and three little berries in the center there. And I was having so much fun with this process. The pen itself it glides on the ceramic really easy. So it's kind of satisfying as you're working with it. It's not like a tricky pen and product to work with, which was really nice. And it comes in multiple colors. I ended up opting for the green because this is kind of like a viral project that is blowing up this year. So I think my Blick Art Supply was out of the red and the black, but I did go through and just outline my little scallop edge. I even made a mistake there. So I had to clean that up a bit. And I just tried to add as much detail as I can. I also went on the outside and created a scalloped border her. Once you are all done, you're just going to follow the instructions on the marker, which is baking this in the oven for about 30 minutes, or you can let it air dry if you just want to use it decoratively, and that is how you finish off your tray. serving trays turn out so cute. I think they're just so fun and totally customizable as well. So you can go as artsy or in-depth as you'd like to, or keep it as simple and kind of clean and minimalistic as you'd like to as well. I know the whole purpose of this video is DIYing, but not everyone has the time to DIY. I'm somebody that loves to take photos. Like I absolutely love it. I take a billion of them, but they all just tend to end up staying in my phone storage. They never make its way out of my phone storage. I do print them occasionally. And when I do print them, I swear that those photos end up just staying in the little envelope and then maybe every year or so I reminisce on the memories. So I also wanted to give you a great option that you can purchase that is such a quality gift, especially for the price point. And that is from today's video sponsor, which is Pexar. I actually have it right here. And this is the Pexar Digital Picture Frame. And I am obsessed with this. I think it is such a cool, ingenious, 
perfect holiday gift especially, but also please feel free to gift this to yourself because it is just something that I love and it has just brightened my mood so much since having it. This photo is actually from when my friends and I went zip lining and Marie uploaded this. You can swipe through. Look how cool this is, you guys. But it's completely matte. Like the surface is fully matte and anti-glare. So essentially this is like a picture frame that displays a billion photos, but it also displays video, which I think is super cool as well because I've seen these picture frames in the past, but this one actually has an anti-glare surface. It's 11 inches. You can swipe through them if you want too, but you can also, oh my gosh, look at this one of me and Winston. But you can also totally let it run on like a slideshow and you just have an ever ending stash of memories right in front of you, which I think is just such a great gift to give somebody this holiday season. The great thing about the Pexar picture frame is you do not have to decide what photo to display in your picture frame because you can actually upload photos from virtually anywhere. You just download the app and you upload them directly into the picture frame. You can easily upload photos to it as well via an SD card or a USB drive. So you don't have to like upload it directly through the app. So I'll be gifting my parents hand down a Pexar digital picture frame. So hopefully, I don't think they're going to be watching this, but hopefully they are not because that's one of their gifts this season. I've actually had my Pexar in the kitchen upstairs for about the past month or so, but I really want to get one for my nightstand because I think it's just the perfect nightstand picture frame to have all those memories right there. You can display it horizontally or you can display it vertically and it just automatically changes the orientation and ratio of your photo to display it at the best way possible. And you can put this on the wall if you want to. It comes with a stand so it can easily stand in either the vertical or the horizontal um, orientation. And when Pexar reached out a while ago and asked if I was interested in sharing this product, I automatically knew that I wanted to include it in a DIY gifts video because I really do hands down think this is a perfect ideal gift for anybody in your life that you do not know what to get something for. And if you're interested as well, I will go ahead and link Pexar below for you. Take a look, tap the link in the description box below. The product itself is actually really not a bad price point for what you are getting and for the memories and moments and enjoyment that is going to add to your life. I promise you it is a great, really, really cool, innovative product. So yes, let's go ahead and dive on into another DIY project, but we are actually going to be using the box that the Pexar came in because it comes packaged in a beautiful little like flip top box. So let's get started. For our second project, I'm actually using the box that the Pexar came in because the box it comes in is really beautiful and we have a bunch of these stunning block print wrapping papers which are still available over on Lone Fox and all holiday right now is 15% off over on the website if you guys are curious. And I first started by going in and painting any of the areas on the box that are not gonna be covered by the paper just to make them a little bit more cohesive with the paper I chose. So I opted for this cream toned paint and just gave a coat of this all over all of the edges that I'm not gonna be covering. And as I'm mainly going to be applying the wrapping paper on the flat surfaces and like the largest areas which will show the print. So this is a print that I opted for and the wrapping paper is really nice. It's like that quality handmade paper feel. It's not like your traditional wrapping paper so it has this really nice hand to it which I love and I'm just laying out the different sections of the box over the top of the wrapping paper and cutting it out that way we can start covering it and I'm going to be using just some traditional tacky glue to cover this down on the surface. Now you're going to want to make sure to get this on every single element of the paper so it doesn't start to ripple or budge in any way but I did go ahead and apply this on the outside of my entire box and press down my wrapping paper making sure it was nice and smooth and then I worked on to the next part of my box which was the side here so I just pressed the corner of the wrapping paper against it and just sort of pressed out the shape that I needed to cut and you can see here that it imprinted onto the paper and I cut that shape out and I ended up just cutting out two of these because I needed one for either side and I repeated the process of this until all of the sides of the box were covered in our wrapping paper. After letting that adhere down for a bit, I did go through and press out the top window of the box, which this is just going to be determined on your box shape itself, but I did have a little window in the top, which I used an X-Acto knife to cut the excess wrapping paper out of, and this is actually an area that I can apply a little mirror in, which is great because I think that it's going to give it more of like a vanity dresser top feel. So I just finished off all of the sides of the wrapping paper, and then you can see the exposed edges here <laughs> were um, where I painted, and here's a little mirror I cut down to just put on the end 
inside of my box. So I glued that down with some hot glue. And next what I wanted to do was actually create like a little ribbon fastener, which I feel like just adds a charming little element to this. So I added this chocolate brown ribbon, which I glued down to either side, the back top tab and then the inside tab of the box. And then once those are glued down, you can just tie them in a little bow to keep the box shut if you wanted to bring this with you, or you can just put it on your vanity top. And I love how the ribbon looks even when it's untied. So I think you can style it either way. For our next project, this probably is one of my favorites in the video. I just love this project so much and how customizable it is. But this first one that I did, which I'm going to be sharing with you, actually didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it to. So I'm going to be sharing with you two of the same project kind of in this project, if that makes sense. So the first thing I'm actually doing is I googled a crest shape on Google and I had it on my phone. I'm using my phone kind of as a light box and I'm putting tape over the top in order to trace the crest shape over the top of the tape. That way I could transfer this over over to my glass candy jar and then press this onto my glass candy jar because what we're going to be doing is actually creating a little bit of a mask that we are going to be using to etch onto the top of our glass surface. So what I'm removing now is going to be where we're going to be etching and anywhere where the green tape is, of course, the etching material is not going to hit the glass. So the next thing I'm going to do is I got some letter stickers at Michael's and I placed a piece of tape across my crust here. That way I can have a nice straight line for placing my letter stickers and and this was another project I was creating for my mom. So we have the same initials. So I wasn't sure if this project would even turn out properly. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just test this out using our universal initials so I can keep it in the end, even if it doesn't turn out as great, which this one did not for some reason. But as you can see here, I'm going in with the armor etch and I'm applying a nice thick layer of this over the top of the surface. And you're just supposed to let this sit for about 30 minutes before going and washing it off. And do not judge the sink here, you guys. This is our craft sink, so it's really dirty. And as you can see, I'm pulling off the tape and removing the DMS. And for some reason on this one, it just kind of has a bit of a splotchy appearance. I'm not too sure why, but I did go in and the main project that I actually wanted to do with this were individual martini glasses. So I got these at Home Goods as well, same exact time that I got the platter in the first project. And I actually created smaller crest shapes the same exact way by putting the tape over the top of my phone and then drawing out the crest shape, putting it on the glass and then cutting it out and using a letter sticker as the mask in addition. That way we have these little crests that are individually personalized for the recipient of your gift, whether it be like a couple and you can put their two initials on it or a friend. I just think this is a really, really cute idea. And I will say the martini glasses worked so much better. The etch looks incredible on this. And when I removed the tape and also removed the individual sticker letter, it just looked so freaking good. Once I got it all dried up, the etch was so even across the surface. So I'm not too sure if there's different types of material that this works best on, but I do love how these martini glasses with the etched initials turned out. I had to save the best for last. So I ended up finding this product here called Claystone, which is a self-hardening clay, but it's a terracotta clay. And I got this also at Blick Art Supply. Now I cut off a small chunk of this because we are going to be creating a customized wall candle sconce. And I just love this because first of all, it's a natural terracotta tone of clay, but it's also an air dry clay. So your options for creation is really endless. Like you don't have to bake this. You don't have to figure out how to get this in a kiln. So what I did was I actually rolled out like a quarter inch thickness of our terracotta clay and then I drew out a rough oval shape on a piece of paper which I'll be using as my template to cut out the sconce so I placed that onto our clay and then I just used an exacto knife to cut that shape out and pulled off all the extra clay and then just sort of tapped around the exterior of the shape to make it a little bit more streamlined and make the edges kind of round down and kind of feel a bit more finished. 
lined this glass bowl with just some aluminum foil while this hardened and I folded my oval shape at about a third of the way up. So I left two thirds in the top portion and then just folded the bottom section. So it kind of creates almost this miniature wall shelf. And I cut this tiny piece off of Justin's straw to cut a hole out on the top. That way we can hang this with a nail. And then I also got a little candle cup as well, which I just pulled this out of a thrifted candle holder and I wrapped that in clay. So you'll see here that we have the dried down wall shelf. And then here's our dried down little candle cup, which I did that separately. That way I can glue them together in the end. But in order to decorate this, I actually used a white paint pen, which I got on Amazon. I'll link these for you guys below. It's like a paint marker. And I just did like a very organic sort of folk art feeling paint job on our little sconce. So I did this border with sort of like a checkered edge, if you will. And then in between each of our solid squares, I added a small little dot. And I love the way that this motif looks. Like I think this looks so cute around the exterior of this piece. But something that sucks is I actually missed somehow getting me drawing out these stems for our flowers. So I just drew out these stem shapes or they're gonna be more so vines. And I also added like a little bow to it. And then I added some leaves to that. And I am not at all an artist, you guys, like at all, at all. So as you can see here, these leaves don't even look that great. But once you have it all filled in and you add those small details in, it really is so cute and charming. Like you cannot go wrong with this, I promise you. And the last step was also to paint our little candle cup or add some details. So I just did the same exact kind of dot and square motif that I did on the outside of the sconce. And once this was all dried down, I hot glued it on to our candle sconce little shelf there. And that is how I finished off this candle sconce. so much for watching this video and I hope that it gave you some ideas for gifting this holiday season. Do not forget to also check out Pexar using the link in the description box below if you are in the market for a digital picture frame. It's such a perfect gift even for yourself or a friend this holiday.